rest of me, he crossed him. We gonna have to talk about this revelation. He's saving souls, coming back, no hesitation. Raising graves, keep your flower decorations. Doing things eyes never seen with this protection. Now that we got this out the way, I'm just here to say repent and fervent pray. It's gonna come a day, the trumpets on the bed. Skies are opening, Jesus have mercy. Hey y'all, I am Auntie Nina, aka Nina. Um, I am the overseer of Ships That Don't Sink Resource House. It's an online ministry. Um, we have, it's so many of us, it's a group of young believers who are vessels of God. And we all are like, you know, very gifted, but mostly we all love the word of God. That is first and foremost. Um, this is an online ministry and welcome to our YouTube. Welcome to 4F Sakes, where we talk about faith, food, fitness, and fashion. Nothing in a distinct order, but definitely faith first. Um, and faith, food, fitness, and fashion is not just for the secular things, but it's also for the kingdom. We talk about all things kingdom here. And so um, it might seem secular. It might seem like, oh my gosh, you said 4F Sakes. But we know we all say that in our head. But God has showed me that 4F Sakes is about faith, food, fitness and fashion. I know I said that backwards all the time, as long as faith is first. Um, and we are talking about all things kingdom, how you need to have the faith for the kingdom, how you need to have the fitness for the kingdom, how you need the right food for the kingdom and the right fashion. And today's F that I'm going to talk about is fashion. Um, of course, still mixed with faith. Um, I'm going to introduce myself again. My name is Nina in the community. They call me Auntie Nina. I feel like I'm an auntie to the generations and I am a prophet who is a seer. Um, God talks to me a lot in dreams, um, but first and foremost, I am a child of God, you know, um, and I'm a teen ministry director and like I told y'all, overseer of ships that don't sink. So today I'm coming here to bring you guys a dream discernment. We usually do this on my Instagram, but... We are transitioning to YouTube to get our YouTube popping. And so we want to say welcome. Welcome to our channel. If you are new, please press the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell so you know when we are dropping new videos. You will see different um, people on this channel as this is not just about us. It's about all the ships, all the vessels of ships that don't sink. And um, we have a lot to pour out. Um, we hope that you join our community. Um, the link, I believe, should be in our bio also. And on top of that, make sure you just follow, like, subscribe, share. Okay, so I'm going to dive right in and I'm going to start off by reading you um, the dream. And this dream is from April 19th. 2020. So this is last year. Um, I really started, um, God started involving, evolving my gift around um, the beginning of this year, the first three months. And that was in um, between January and March. That's when I was called into consecration. God called me into consecration. He let me know last year, um, November, that this year, the beginning of this year, I will be called into consecration consecration, which I now know is called incubation. So technically, um, the first year, first part of first three months of this year, I was just in consecration um, with no one around, just me and God, all God. Then the next three months, um, he had me launch. Um, well, God told me to start a prayer call um, for breakthrough. And I did. And it grew from there. And it launched this ministry, Ships That Don't Sink Resource House, an online ministry. And um, we started with 21 days of prayer. And so many people, it just grew daily. And it was amazing. And some of those who joined on 21 Days of Prayer Season 1, um, they are like the foundation. So I guess they are like the co-founders of Ships That Don't Sink. And we just finished Season 2 last month. Um, and so um, from that point, um, God birthed me into my office because I was running for a while. Um, and, you know, I would have all these visions. Um, well, I would have all these dreams and um, I didn't wasn't able to discern them. I always used to think, like, what are they? I used to be so far off. But around um, after consecration, God helped me in consecration. God discerned one dream to me. He helped me unfold it um, before I even knew that I was a prophet, that was a seer. And then he had me deliver a word to um, some leaders, and I did. And then from there, um, around um, May, I birthed my first biggest prophecy um, that is on my Instagram page, I believe, um, for a Friday Refresher Prayer, which we also have those. So make sure you subscribe and check us out. 
on Fridays for Friday Refresher Prayer. Friday Refresher Prayer in a Word is right here on YouTube. We go live 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. And the replays will still be up, so you can always catch them and catch that replay. Um, but I birthed my first biggest prophecy, 528 um, 2021. And um, that's when I fully accepted my call and said, okay, God, I, you, I am who you say I am. And I've been looking for my identity in God for such a long time. Since then, my gift has have evolved. I now see visions while I'm awake. I now can hear God, um, Holy Spirit, how you can say it, but I can audibly hear the things that God say. Um, and so um, God's just really been growing me. So back to this dream. Also, I want y'all to know a quick disclaimer. Um, you, every word might not be for you. You might, this word might not be particularly for you. I want you to, um, always take it to God. Um, once you hear this word, um, sorry, God, um, once you hear this word, I need you to, um, take this word to God because it might be for you now. It might be for you coming in the future. Um, a lot of these dreams that I'm discerning from, and I've been discerning a lot of dreams from last year and maybe 2019 to, um, the, you know, ships that don't sink community. And these were dreams that I had before I could even discern dream before I even had the, um, the ability to discern my dream because I was still very much in training and God has, um, released me to do such a thing now. Um, and you know, I think it was about building integrity and trust, um, because we know that everyone claims to be a prophet and claims to be a seer and claims to have a word from God. So this word might not be for you. And if it is, um, I ask that you still take it to God. And also first John four, four says, test the spirit beloved. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world by this, you know, the spirit of God Every spirit that confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. So you want to test the spirit by the spirit. First John 4. Um, yeah, First John 4. 4, right? Um, chapter 4. First John chapter 4 and 1. So um, we want to make sure that we test the spirit now. Also, even if this is hidden on the money, you like, yo, this is for me. Take it to God. Um, sit in your quiet time with God. Um, I don't even discern dreams with people unless they have their dreams, unless they have sat with God for at least minimum. And I'm talking about minimum sat with God first and they must come with some word that what they heard God says and I just kind of you know help lead them I'm a pointer prophets are pointer we point you in a direction um and also as a director of team ministry I am uh in the role of a shepherd so I shepherd I oversee things I lead you know of the flock and I care so therefore I'm very cautious about what I feed people but I sat with this dream um it was supposed to release yesterday but it's releasing tonight thank you for your patience not you know Okay, so um, I'm going to tell you about the dream. Do I have anything else to say? I'm a talker, y'all, so excuse me. Um, this is, uh, our YouTube is just getting up and running. This is my first dream discernment on YouTube, so there's that. Um, okay, so this dream is from 419 2020. I have many journals. This is when I was just journaling my dreams, writing them out when I was waking up. And then now I voice record most of my dreams because sometimes I have several dreams. So long, back to back to back. So this is when I was still writing my dreams in one of my, I believe this is my second journal. I'm on my, about to be on my fifth journal now. Um, right? Yes. Okay. So it says, um, Father, my dreams have been a bit rough to remember. They all seem looped together. So this was an ongoing dream. It says, um, however, some vivid moments stand out. In one dream, I was like on an ending Martin episode and I was in the old apartment of Gina and Martin. In their closet was a garment I seemed to have been wanting because I had one like it of my own. I asked Gina to wear it. She said she didn't want it. It was Martin's mother's and it was too big. Yet I felt like I've been knowing and looking for this garment. Like I was picking back up from another dream. So then the dream switched and it says... Um, it was a moment with my mom and out my mom and I was getting baptized. She was actually first and I remember yelling, but you went already and I'm still waiting. So then she told me to come and I was pushed under the water. I remember being scared, but when I was under, I felt relieved, I felt free. And then um, 
at another point in the dream, I saw Nicki Minaj out. She was out of the spotlight, but she was allowing me to see her as she was, what she's been going through. Um, and it's like we was old friends or something. I can't remember too much more. I need to know. Um, I, and then I stopped right there. That's the end of the dream because I started talking. So, okay. So I want to talk about, um, I'm going to give you scripture after I describe what this was happening in this dream. So it says that um, it was like I was on an ending Martin episode. And we know that Martins have many seasons. So I was in the ending of a season in my life. So by the time this time, 4-19-2020, um, in August 4th, 2019, I gave my life to Christ. Um, I went up, I confessed Christ as the Lord in my life. I accepted him into my heart. I believed that Jesus went to the cross and died for, died for my sins. And so I was, you know, I received my gift of salvation, um, of grace through faith, right, in Christ. But by the time 419, 2020, I wasn't fully baptized. I was never emerged under the water. So right here it says, um, I was on the ending of a Martin episode, and um, and I was in an old apartment of Gina and Martin in their house. Um, in, in their closet was a garment I seem to have been wanting. So the ending of a Martin episode was the ending of a season in my life. Um, it might be an ending of a season in many of you live also. So it was the ending of a season. Also, it says I was in an old um, apartment, right? So apartment is like a house. It's a dwelling place. It's a abode, a tabernacle or a tent, a, shel a shelter residence or a secure setting. It's also a symbol of acquisition, prosperity, possessions, and accomplishment, a center of family activity, but it's also spiritually. Family activity also means spiritually, a family line, dynasty, or nation. Spiritually, a family line, dynasty, or nation. It says, I was on the ending Martin episode, and I was in the old apartment of Martin and Gina. This was a season that was ending. We all know Martin and Gina um, for the culture. You already know that they was a famous couple on TV. It says, I was in an old apartment. So it was a coming, that being that it was old, the fact that I said old, I knew it was old apartment. It's not new. That it was an ending of something. So an ending of a season and an ending of a, a dynasty, an ending of a nation ending of a family line that's what is his right here because i said in their closet was a garment i seem to have been wanting i've been wanting this garment it says because i had one just like it of my own i asked gina to wear it she said she didn't want it it was martin's mother's so this is an ending not only of a season but of, of a spiritually of a family line of maybe um generational curses, um, the way you used to do things in your family line and things like that. When I, um, when I look up the, uh, prophetically name of Martin and Gina, the biblical name, Gina means, um, garden, farming, shepherd. Martin means war God of Rome, war and, um, war and farming. Now, usually the war God was called Romelus of Rome and his, one of his sons, Romelus, um, I believe it was Romelis. Let me look. Come, you know, give me a second, cause I gotta, I gotta give you guys, I gotta give you guys this. Um, okay, Romelis and Remus. Um, um, they were supposed to be like Roman mythology gods, but many of them, uh, many people believe that Rome, the city of Rome, and um, the foundation, the founding of this, they are the founding of the city of Rome. They were supposed to be twins, right? Um. Their father was the war god. Let me see who his fa their father was. Their father was a war god. His name was, um, okay, okay, okay. I want to get the father name also. So hold on one second. Una mas. Okay, their father name was Mars because Martin name is um, meaning war god, war god, and um, war god means Mars, and um, that was Rome, Romelis and um, Romelis and Remus father. Um, he impregnated their mother. Um, her name would have been Gina. This is what it was pointing me to. So Romelis, 
he was the one who was the founder of, he was like the first original king, supposedly, of Rome. Okay, this is a lot of, some say it's Greek mythology, some said it's true, some says it's true, but the story was stretched, which turned into Greek mythology mythology but it says Romelus and Remus are twin brothers whose story tells the event that led to the founding of the city of Rome in the Roman kingdom by Romelus killing by Romelus by Romelus the uh it was the city of Rome and Roman kingdom by Romelus the killing of Remus by his twin brother along with other tales from their stories have inspired artists throughout the ages all these mythology Greek writers right it says um I'll say it says although the tale takes place before the founding of Rome um, the earliest known written account of the myth is from late, from the late third century. So Romelus is the one, he was the one who was, um, who started the foundation of Rome. It also says that their mother, Rhea, was a vestal virgin and the daughter of a former king who had been replaced by his brother. In same sources, Rhea conceived them when their father, the god Mars, which Martin names means Marge, Mars, Gina in there means garden and shepherd, shepherd. So Rhea, her name, um, it also, Gina also comes from uh, Regina, which is also Rhea. So it's this one and the same. So this is coming from um, the end of an age, an end of a dynasty, an end of a family lineage. Because Romelis was supposed to be, they say, he was the first king of, um, he was the first king of Rome. He's the one who started the King Dynasty. So the fact that I was in this old department on the ending of an episode, and it's so it's an ending of a season, the ending of an ever, and this old department, an old family line, this is this is ending. It's old. This is what's been going on for a while. And it says I was looking for this garment. Now, if we look up garment, the definition for garment, I want to look it up. Um, well, actually, I already have it. The significance of the word garment means um. It says in this, it says in the realm of the spirit, everyone is considered to be clothed with one of the garments or other. That is what we see from the anchor scripture. Joshua, the high priest, was physically clothed with a dignifying priestly garment to carry out his assignment that was on the exterior. But in the spiritual realm, he wore a filthy garment in Zechariah 3, 1 to 5. It is important, therefore, to note that we are wearing in the spirit, what we are wearing in the spirit realm is far more significant than what we wear in the physical realm. I have to make this point because I was in a, on a, a ending of a season in an old apartment looking for a garment one that seems similar to mine. That's how I knew it was in the family. It was something similar, but it was a season that was a season that was ending. It says um, a garment dig, uh, is three things. One, it identifies is your identity. Garment dignify identity. For example, when you see a nurse in uniform, you don't need to be told who he or she is. Number two, dignity. Garment signifies dignity. A well-dressed individual is considered a dignified person, while a shabby dressed person loses respect before people. Three, it's your authority. A person garment can be a mark of his or her authority. The authority level of a soldier is conformed by his or her uniform. Four, garment reflects prosperity. When you see a wealthy person, what he or she wears most of the time shows that he or she is a prosperous per person. Beloved, what garments are you wearing? How are you dressed in the realm of the spirit? How are you dressed in the realm of the spirit? So this family lineage in this apartment that I was looking on the end of a season of Martin, which seemed to be, you know, like I said, for the culture, that's how everybody figured Martin and Gina, everybody wants that kind of relationship. And we can look at it and it wasn't really a kingdom relationship. They actually shacked up together, didn't get married for a long time, had, a, you know, different things going on, not to discredit anything from the show, but we got to look at it in the aspect of what the kingdom, because we are talking about things kingdom here. And this is why this is pointing to fashion, because how are you dressed in the spirit realm we're focusing on that f today fashion right so it says i was also looking for this garment because i know i have one like it and gina said it's in the closet i don't want it it was martin's mother's it was too big she was disregarding it it was something she didn't want but i felt that i needed it then the dream switched instantly after that and i saw my mom was about to get baptized and usually mothers in your dream represents holy spirit um and i was like wait a minute um, I remember, and I yelled, I remember yelling, but you went already. I'm still waiting. Cause at this time in, in, in the physical and like in real life, I was still waiting to be baptized. So then she told me to come and I was pushed under the water. And I remember being scared when I was under, I felt relieved, free, 
when and then you know I came up. Now we know that mothers usually equals guidance, security, calling to your mom. That's why guidance is Holy Spirit, right? So instead of me getting a garment, the old garment that Gina said it was too big, it was like too big. I wind up going to get baptized because see, I was already hearing from God. Holy Spirit was already speaking to me before I was um, physically emerged underwater. Before I made my public declaration of getting baptized, Holy Spirit was already talking to me. And so it says, um, I was under, I felt relieved. So what brought me to the scripture was, now my scriptures is, I'm gonna start at Luke 5, chapter five, verse 33. It says, Jesus is questioned about fasting. I'm going to read the scripture and then I'm going to read some precepts. It says, then they said to him, why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers likewise and likewise those of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink? Again, then they said to him, they said to Jesus, why do the disciples of John, John the Baptist, fast often and make prayers and likewise those of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink? And he said to them, can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast? Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. They will fast in those days. Then he spoke a parable to them. And he said, no one puts a piece of a new gar from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, the new one makes a tear. And also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins or else the new wineskins will burst. And the new wineskins will, sorry, the new wineskins will burst and be spilled and the wineskins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins. Both are preserved and no one having drunk old wine immediately desires new. For he says the old is better. So this dream was talking to many of us who think that we have to carry on the same way that our parents carried on. God is calling an end to a season for some things. For some of you, you are not going to do things in a traditional way that your parents used to do it. That it used to say that, that was happening in your family lineage. Maybe you didn't have marriage. Maybe um, you, you never seen anyone marry. Maybe that you was raised in um, single parent homes, whether that's a mother or a father. Um, maybe there was... Um, I don't know, a lot of drug abuse. Maybe, you know, um, whatever is happening, God said the old is now being passed away because now when you put on your new garment of salvation, I was in there looking for an old garment um, because I had one like it and I wanted it. And it, Gina said, it was too big. She was like, it was Martin's mother. So that means this garment's been in the family for a while because I was in Martin and Gina's house. I wasn't at her uh, mother-in-law house. So that means her mother-in-law gave it to her. It was being passed down and God said, we're not doing that no more. He's not doing it. God is surely doing a new thing. It's time to take off the old man. The old man has to die because you will not continue. You will break generational curses. The family lineage will not go. You will be the change that is coming. Because when I looked and saw my mom was getting baptized, I was like, you went already. In my waking life, my mother really did get baptized. Um, but I know she, it meant the Holy, it meant Holy Spirit when I seen my mother. Because I said, you went already. And my mom said, yes, now you come. I was drawn unto her and she pushed me under the water to let the old man die I was scared some of you might be scared to change the trajectory of your family but God is calling unto you once you give your life to Christ you can't do the things that you used to do you can't you can't walk in that way you're not going to carry on those family traditions because this is now about kingdom family and what God has called for your life so he said you're going to be pushed under the water and the old man is going to come off I said when I went under I was scared but when she pushed me under I felt free relieved so therefore no more old garments because God cannot pour new wine into old wineskins if you trying to do things the same way you used to do it it won't work it won't work God I'm gonna just tell you right now God can pour new wine into old wineskins but here's the thing he will not do it no he will not do it I remember Holy Spirit called me now come um, really in this year when I got baptized on, oh Lord, um, okay, 
I was baptized in this year of March, around the 23rd, 24th. I got to really find those dates. Between the 19th and the 24th, I didn't want to go look at my phone at the exact date, but I remember it's March. And it was after I came out of consecration. And when I went into consecration in January, God promised me that I will not come out the same. I went into consecration, not baptized underwater, but I went into consecration knowing God. I went into consecration fully hearing Holy Spirit, fully still having dreams. I wasn't being able to discern dreams, but my my relationship with God was growing. God said more wine, more wine. The wine is salvation. Okay. Um, the water is Holy spirit. So it's a new garment dripped in salvation. You will be put in a new garment. That old garment is gone. You will not need that thing anymore. You will not need to show it's an ending season. The season has ended. You are not doing things no more. Anything like a house or apartment means a family lineage. Okay. Um, if it's, um, it's a family lineage, you are, you are breaking things off your family lineage. This is why you can't put on that new garment because it's going to start with you. I remember yelling. I'm wait. I'm you went already. I'm still waiting. So she told me to come and I was pushed under the water. I remember being scared, but when I went under, I felt relieved and free. That old man came off of me. I can say now, even now to this day, I no longer desire to do the things that my, the way my family did it. And it's nothing to take away from them, but it's just who I am. I am a new wineskin. I am a new creation in Christ. Um, God can pour new wine into this new wineskin because it won't burst. I now have the capacity to be able to handle it. This garment, he can now stitch new things on, not stitch it to an old garment because it would tear the garment. So the precept to that says, um, it says, Okay, it says right here in the precept, it says he did not come merely to add. Okay, so I'm gonna read from the precept from 527 to 32. It says, Jesus bestowed favor on those who seemed least worthy and helped them. First, a de demonic, first, a demonic, um, first, a demonic received Christ's touch then a paraplegic, and finally a tax collector. When Jesus called Levi, um, when Jesus called, Levi left all and followed him. He left everything behind. So somebody who was possessed demonically received Christ's touch, then a paraplegic, then a tax collector. And when Jesus called Levi, Levi left all and then followed him. Only Luke emphasizes this total obedience on the part of Levi. In all three synoptic gospels, Levi's dinner and guests led to questions about religious practices, about religious practices. The outcome was that Jesus' mission involved a radical, listen, a radical break with traditional religious practices. He did not come merely to add to what was already practice his ministry involved something that was radically new this profound difference was seen in the company he kept throughout scripture in the old testament israel was the unfaithful bride and in the new testament the church was compared to a bride in her relationship to christ the bridegroom jesus answer was radical as he con contrasted the joy of the wedding with the sorrow that will come with the absence of the bridegroom he anticipated his coming death Jesus used both a new uh, used both garments, a new unwashed and thus unshrunken cloth that was sewn into an old and seasoned garment. A old season, a old seasoned garment. And I was on an old ending season of Martin. I was on an old I was on an um, ending episode. When it's an ending episode, I was speaking of it as in a season. Like I could tell the whole season was ending. Like it was going to be no more. Um, and wineskins, which because when sewn together, they were watertight, were often used to hold liquids. The new skins and the good had good elasticity and could adjust to the volume of the liquid during the uh, aging process. However, the old skins were rigid and would easily burst under pressure. The gospel Jesus bought could not be absorbed into Judaism, into Judaism, because it was radically new. When Gina told me that um, I was looking for his mother garment was in there. It was too big. She even said it was too big to fill, to keep those laws. God said, you got to accept Jesus. It's not about being religious. It's not about religious 
um, practices. It's about becoming a new garment, putting on your new garments, um, being new wineskins. So God can, Jesus, it can pour, it can be, you can be poured into without you bursting. You will have the capacity. And this comes through the way of baptism. I don't know if some of you have been baptized or not, but it's time and it's time to put on a new way of life. Do not put it off. Do not put it off. I'm going to tell you the fact that I was like, oh, you went already. Like, yes, I was doing all, you know, all the things that I needed, but I didn't make my public declaration um, for Christ. But still, even if God been talking to me about taking off the old man in that season, he was really talking to me about that. And some of us, it's time to take off the old man. When I got baptized this year, I even moved, when I came out of consecration, I sure did not come and go in the same way. Not even my mind. Now I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying that, you know, my flesh is not growling and I don't have desires. But what I am saying, I know I'm not going back to that way. I know that I'm breaking family um, generational curses. I know who Christ has called me to be. I even felt that I was a new cre creation in Christ. I tell people I felt free. I feel so much free now in my life. And even when I gave my life to Christ in August, 2019, I was still struggling, but it was just this year that I fully felt free. So then it was a point when I said, I saw Nikki, right? And Nikki in, um, her name means victory. She was out of the spotlight. Victory didn't seem like it was anywhere in sight, right? It wasn't where it was supposed to be, but I was allowed, she was allowing me to see, um, but allowing me to see her as she was, what she's been going through. Um, it was like, um, where victory was, like I was able to see again what victory could be because I have the victory. We have the victory when we accept Christ into our life. When you fully accept Christ into your heart, you have the victory of being free. Victory was out of the spotlight for so long and what she was going through. She was waiting to be seen again and seen by you. So this is what it is. You have to take off the old, um, Take off that old garment. Don't even look to do things the way that your parents did it or your family used to do it. If God has called you, he called you to do a new thing because he's doing a new thing in you. This is a radical change. It will not be passed down. He is. You are passing down new things. The old garment is the old man. Old wineskins can't have new wine because when they age, they will burst. Will you sustain? Will you maintain? Can you continue to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling? So I also want to read from Mark chapter 2, 21, because I feel like I like um, that precept also. Mark chapter 2, um, verse 21. And it says, um, no one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old garment or else the new piece pulls it away from the old. The new piece, even if you try, it's going to break away because you're not going to be able to do things the same. You can't do things like your family. And I know it's hard, but if you want to be the change that you want to see in your family and you've seen what's been going on for generation to generation, you are not going to be able to attach the old and the new. It just won't mix. It says... um, away from the old and, and the tear is made worse. If you feel God moving you, when I was in consecration, I was away from my family for a long time. They didn't see me. They was like, you always in your house. You always by yourself. I went to the studio to record team ministry and I was back in the presence of God because God had to change me. He had to break some things off of me. He had to let me know that old man was coming off and it was staying off that I will not do things. And now when I go back around them, I still very much, I love my family. I love my mama. I love my sisters, but I cannot do the things that they do if I'm going to be the generational curse breaker. You get what I'm saying? So, um, and it says no one puts new wine into old wine skin or else the new wine bursts and the wine skin bursts the wine skins. The wine is spilled and the wine skins are ruined, but the new wine must be put into new wine skins. I want to read that precept. It says, again, they was talking about fasting. They was talking about the old laws of, um, because we know the Pharisees wanted to deal with the law. So they talking about old, the all old laws of how they used to do things, you know, and our families, don't we feel like what their tradition is law? You feel like that. You feel like you have to uphold it because their traditions is law. This is how we always done it. This is what I've always saw. So this is normal. This is the normal way. And a radical change is definitely not nothing um, normal. Um, it says Jesus clarified the purpose of fasting. Um, familiar key elements were involved in the metaphors Jesus used in response to the question about fasting. 
Jesus rejected fasting because the bridegroom, a metaphor for God in the Old Testament, was there. But when the groom had gone away, then fasting would begin. Jesus' death was not specifically mentioned here because the timing was not yet right for such a revelation. The metaphor of the cloth as well as the wine and the wineskin reflected that a new age had come, one in which the old Mosaic law would not suffice a new age. So when the Roman, and I told you Martin means Mars, and Mars was the father of Rome, Romelis and Remen, Remu, um, and Romelis started Rome. We know that the Roman Empire was an age. There's going to be an end to an age. It says, because a new age is coming in. The new body of Christ um, is being revived. The body of Christ is being revived. A new way. We are doing things the kingdom way. It says that a new age had come and one in which the old exotic law would not suffice. The old way of thing, doing things will not suffice. We will not live by that. And I'm not saying disrespect the mosaic law because the law is to help you see where your maturity is at. But that was never meant to bring you salvation. Jesus was the way. Jesus is the way. Okay. He is the way, the life, and the truth. Okay. You need some Jesus in your life. So you got to get your salvation. Um, I accepted again, I tell you, I accepted Jesus Christ into my life, August 4th, 2019. Um, and I was baptized and now I want to tell y'all the exact date because I mean, I just, I have to, I have to tell y'all the exact date. Um, I have to tell y'all, um, when, what date was this? Um, hold on y'all. What day was this? Oh man. I can't, let me see, let me see. Let me stop, let me stop, let me stop. stop. Okay, I was baptized on March. Um, I thought this would tell me, but let's see. Cause I got pictures. I got, you know, this was a, it was a big moment for me. It was a very big moment for me. Okay, so February, March. Okay, here we go. On March 21st, um, 2021, I was baptized. And, um, you know, and that was coming out of consecration. That was like towards the end, cause I was January, February, March. Um, and that's when God started telling me about false prophets and started telling me to pay more attention to my dreams. He started really just being on me. And I was wondering God, why God kept talking to me about prophets, because I, um, you have to be born one. I was born to see a seer prophet. And, um, I just never really wanted to accept my call because I always thought that was like psych psychic stuff. And it used to scare me and I used to run from it. Um, because since a child, I've always been this way, but God said he is, we are putting on, um, you are putting on a new garment. I mean, I love that it talked about Joshua as the high priest because on the outside of the physical, Joshua looked like, there's a lot of people who look like they're um, believers. There's a lot of people who look like they're walking with Christ, but they're undergarments. They're in the spiritual realm. What is it really? Because when you go under the water, that is spiritual, that you are lead, killing the old man. The old man has to die and will pass away and you are leaving him there. That's something that you are detaching from. You can't still hold on to and want to follow Christ in the old way. I hope this is making sense because Nikki, when I saw you, you miss it. Vic victory has been out of your spotlight, has been out of your sight. You've been, you finally seeing what, what it goes through to have victory it's going to take some things okay but victory is in um is fully in christ what i wanted to read something to you guys real quick um the parable of the old wine skins right it says the pharisees all fasted often regularly twice a week besides the great national days of fasting they always look like they was doing the right thing right reading their bibles praying at a certain time it says um Jesus' first illustration comes from the customs of the time of marriage, but I don't want to read that part. So here we go. It says, Jesus' second illustration derives from a well-known fact. No one with a reasonable amount of experience in mending clothes will waste a piece of new cloth to repair an old garment. If new cloth is used to patch an old garment and the patch becomes wet, it shrinks as it dries and puts strain on the old garment. That tear becomes worse than it was. Jesus is showing that his new doctrines do not match the old rites of the Pharisees, which required a lot of fasting. If his new doctrines were attached to their old ones, it would distort the truth. Christ is preaching against um, 
Sync Prism. Sync. Let me look that up. Sorry, y'all. I got y'all know. If y'all don't know and y'all new to this channel and y'all new to me, um, Auntie Nina have a problem with saying some words, so I I do use I do use Google. Sync Prism. I think it's syncretism. 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 Um, the mixing of beliefs. We must completely replace the old human way of life with the new godly way of life because God's new way is righteous and spiritually strong. It cannot be combined with the old, wicked, and weak human way of life. They are incompatible. Wow, that is amazing. I was looking for the new, the, you know, garments. I was looking to put my old garment with a garment that I had to like just when I found it. We can't do things like that. God said, I'm not doing that. He can, but God said he is not doing that. And um, I think I think that's I think that's amazing. So um, that's all I have. Um, I hope you guys get this. I pray right now in Jesus name. Um, and, and let me pray it out. I should have prayed before. Father God, I thank you as this word falls upon the fleshy hearts um, who are under the sound of my voice, who will watch this replay, who's watching this right now. I thank you, Lord God, that you just um, bless them with the discernment, oh, Father God, and just the time to take it to you to see if this word is for them, oh, Father God. I pray that this word just be um, an increase and an echo to what you have already been telling them, oh, Father God. I thank you right now that they will test the spirit by the spirit. They will take it to you. Holy Spirit, I ask that right now at this time that you just... Um, lead them in the way for them to go um, concerning this word. And I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Um, I hope to see you guys soon. Um, this will not be the last one. I will get better with discerning dreams on here. Sometimes I'm a little all over the place, but I pray that you got this. I will drop the scripture references in there, even from Joshua. I was loving that they brought up Joshua when um, the enemy tried to take Joshua into the courts and we got to remember at that time Zechariah was seeing a vision so this was into the spirit realm this was not in the physical and you have to know is your spiritual garments right are you still trying to you know put on the new garment that God have gave you and attach it to the old garments the old man gotta go you and the old man and your new life can't they can't coincide they can't live they can't live together the old man has to go we are putting on new garments we are dripped in salvation and um thank you for watching for f sakes and um usually these will hopefully come out on sundays um i can't say every week for, or every other sunday but we'll try to i will try and get these dreams discernment out on sundays um thank you guys i love you and um i see you soon don't forget to like share subscribe and turn on the bell notifications and um follow us join our community the link should be in the bio as well talk to y'all soon and you know i've seen more intimacy in my life in my prayer life with the lord and it's brought fruit in my life or if you're worried about separation issues please just come to this group because i'm telling you it will help you a lot it's been great to have a community like walk beside you as you grow in your faith so it's not transactional but it's, it's love